At 10 a.m. today, the High Court unanimously quashed the conviction for child sex crimes of Cardinal George Pell. In a statement that was as short as it was emphatic, each and every one of the judges of the High Court declared that the jury should never have convicted him and that the Victorian Court of Appeal should never have upheld that conviction. Not only a unanimous decision of the bench of seven, but also a single shared judgment. That's not a common event. Rightly, Cardinal Pell now walks free. But sadly, this won't be the end of the controversy, at least not for some time. That's because so many have invested so much in their campaign against him for the crimes others have committed children and for which today Pell's own conviction rightly has been quashed. After considering all the evidence and weighing all the argument, the High Court found that there was never enough evidence upon which to convict Australia's most senior Catholic Church leader. And the evidence, and I quote the court here, that required the jury acting rationally to have entertained a reasonable doubt as to guilt, which they did not, my addition here, however credible the jury found the complainant. Given the real crimes of some priests and the real failings of the church in coming to grips with the sexual abuse epidemic and fair criticisms, I have to say, of Pell's seeming lack of empathy, it was always going to be hard to find an unbiased jury to deal with this claim. To some, Pell will always be guilty regardless of the High Court's judgment because all priests are suspect and every complainant must be believed. To others, of course, the Cardinal could never have been guilty because these awful crimes are so out of character with the man they knew. After all, it's a matter of fact, the Pell, who was the first major Australian bishop to take sexual abuse seriously, was also the one to report offenders to the police rather than just move them on. For me too, this issue has always been deeply personal. As I said, when the Cardinal was first convicted 18 months ago, and I quote myself here, but I, I come to this issue, I said, as a lawyer, as a Catholic, and someone now in the media who as a child grew up in the very diocese that was at the epicentre, Ballarat, of Australia's abuse epidemic. As I said back when he was first convicted, on the other side there's revulsion at a monstrous crime, the breach of trust, anger at a church that for too long has covered up for predators in their midst and implacable resentment for an institution that's so cold, so lacking in human emotion, so male and so out of touch. But on the other side, there's frustration in a media that for two decades has made Pell personify the sins of the church. Dismay at our modern blindness to all the good work that the Catholic Church and its clergy do every day. And yes, some real doubt, I said this back then, about how a jury could convict on the basis of uncorroborated testimony in unlikely circumstances. For me, I said, either way, this has been a dreadful challenge to my faith in the two institutions that have done so much to shape my life, the Catholic Church and the law. As someone who respects both institutions, I, like so many, have had to confront the reality that one or both of them has failed. Well, after today's judgment for me at least, the High Court has pretty much restored my faith in our legal system, which having followed this case closely, having read hundreds of pages of judgments and watched a good part of two days worth of High Court hearings in March has been severely challenged. To all of this, there should have been a far better response from the Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews than his statement issued today, which, and I'll read it now, said this. I make no comment about today's High Court decision. But I have a message for every single victim and survivor of child sex abuse. I see you, I hear you, I believe you. Well, to the Victorian Premier, I say this. The High Court does not lightly overturn a jury verdict given that the principle of jury trial lies at the heart of our legal system. But they did. 
And now there must be a full and transparent inquiry into how this case ever came to be. The initial investigations by Victoria Police, the leaks and leaks to the media, the ringing around for complainants, the standoff with the DPP, indeed the very evidence tendered in the Lawyer X royal Commission where emails between then senior ranking police officials discussed information about the Pell matter appearing in the media and hoping they said that it would take the heat off them and the scandalous involvement of Nicola Gobbo as both a police informant and a defence barrister. Take a look at how the Victoria Police conducted itself at the very time that this Pell investigation was being pursued and there's no doubt serious questions about integrity must be asked, not just for the Cardinal's sake, but for every one of us who might one day be in his position accused of a very serious crime and want to hope that the system is fair and that justice is indeed truly blind. And to those inclined to think not proven rather than not guilty, please take a look at the statement of Cardinal Pell after today's verdict. He said, I hold no ill will toward my accuser. I do not want my acquittal to add to the hurt and bitterness so many feel, Pell said. There is certainly hurt and bitterness enough. Today's verdict, he said, did not clear the church. It just cleared him. And there was not a slightest note of triumph in his statement, just relief that in his case justice had been done and hope that in all cases justice should be done, including to all people who have been betrayed and let down by those in authority. I understand the anger of many outside the Catholic faith at the crimes committed in the past and anger towards those in positions of power who perpetrated them or, or who covered them up. But your anger doesn't even come close to the anger of Catholics themselves. Many who feel so let down by the church that their very faith in God has been shaken. Some have left, some have come back to the church, but almost all who have been touched by this issue will never see the institution in the same way again. But as hard and as dispiriting and gut-wrenching as some of these historical abuse crimes may be, it cannot justify, in the words of the High Court today, and again I quote, a significant possibility that an innocent person has been convicted because the evidence did not establish guilt to the requisite standard of proof. And in the end, it all comes down to that.